I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences And gaze at the moon till I lose my senses I can't look at hobbles and I can't stand fences Don't fence me in Hey guys, welcome to my product review of Fast Fence and tutorial on how to set up a portable electric fence, take it down, and how to train your horse how to respect it. I'm going to walk you through each piece of the Fast Fence kit. What comes standard, what isn't included but still essential, and even a few electric fence hacks. I wanted to test this product out because I am sick and tired of paying ridiculously expensive stall fees at rodeos, or having to race to grab the very last stall available. Having a portable electric fence means my horses don't have to stand on concrete stalls and gives us more flexibility when traveling. I want to give a huge thank you to my friends at Riding Warehouse for hooking me up with a fast fence kit to try out. Okay, here's what we're working with. Corner posts, hammer not included, power source bullet, electric tape, metal stakes, and very important driving cap, two gate handles, electric tape storage wrap, and intermediate posts. I'll just be honest with you on the front end, this was only my second time ever setting up this fence and even after I asked some experts and sought some guidance from the manufacturer, I kind of did things my own way. I call it the express method. Okay first, I carefully studied all the instructions to figure out how the puzzle pieces fit together. The fence was super easy to set up and took me only about 10 minutes. I started by driving in four corner posts so I know how big I want to make my pen. Corner posts are the ones with the black clips on them. Then I use the remaining corner posts for additional support. In this kit, it is mission critical to use the driving cap. Otherwise, you will splinter your posts and get fiberglass in your hands or hit your finger with a hammer. Yes, I did learn this the hard way. I didn't use the intermediate posts because one, I didn't feel like I needed them on this small of a pen, but two, they have flat bottoms on these posts. I probably disagree with the manufacturer that they can be driven into the ground easily with a gloved hand. Next, you tie the electric tape onto one of the gate handles. This doesn't have to be fancy, just any kind of knot that will stay put will work. What you don't want is a long tail hanging down that you or your horse could accidentally bump or brush by. Once it is tied on, set it by your first post or hang it, or wherever you want your gate to be. Then start unrolling the spool until you get to the next post. Tuck the electric tape in between the top black clip. These clips are adjustable up and down the post. Proceed to the next post and repeat until you get back to the gate post. You want to make sure the tape fits in the clips flat and correctly, otherwise they can slip out and your fence will sag. You can adjust tension as you go, and you want to make sure it stays fairly taut. I found that the second pass is trickier to get even tension on. Depending on how deep you drive your posts, or how sturdy they are, they'll start to bend or lean inward slightly. One tip is to set your posts leaning slightly outward. So when you secure the tape, it braces them in or more straight up and down. Once you get back to the corner gate post, you just move down the post and begin the lower rail, retracing your steps back to each post. Again, the black clips are adjustable up and down as needed. I just sat the remaining spool on top of the final post, but it's pretty heavy for that slender of a post. You could rewrap the remaining tape around the orange spool, but that just sounded like more work than I wanted to do. Next is attaching the power source. The power button is just a recessed toggle that's pretty hard to distinguish between the on and off position. However, there is an indicator light on top, but in harsh daylight, it's really hard to see. I started by hanging the power source bullet on the fence by bending one of the small metal stakes and looping it into the black clip. Next, I pressed another metal stake into the ground. The fast fence kit is supposed to come with a grounding rod, but my shipment was missing that. These stakes work just fine anyways. When connecting the clips, just like jump starting a car, always connect the grounding connection first, that's the green one, to the metal stake on the ground. Then clip the red or a live connection to the tape. You want to make sure you get a really good connection on the live, so you might even want to wrap the tape around the connection once tightly. Lastly, push the on button and you're ready to go. Other than grabbing the fence with your bare hand or daring your traveling partner to do it, you can test that the fence is hot by placing some long grass or thin weeds against the tape. 
Now it's time to put your horse in our expertly built pen. Come on in, Striker. The water's fine. <laughs> Poor boy. Yes, he still has his bandages on. But don't worry, his recovery is coming along. Slowly, but surely. This is Stryker's second time in the hot fence, and he's a quick learner. Some people recommend making your horse touch the fence for the first time, but I'd rather they just figure that out on their own instead of associating me with that shock. I also built the pen pretty small when I put them in it for the first time, so it's almost inevitable that they're going to touch it. This way they can figure out what a hot fence is all about and they can't get much momentum when they spook away from it. Check this out, even Venus is careful not to get too close. Now let's swap horses and give Elvis a turn. Curious George over here insists on touching the fence about five times. <laughs> He was pretty nervous at first and wouldn't even eat much inside the pen. I'd recommend leaving them in there until their body language tells you that they're no longer nervous. I also chose to set this up in their own pasture when training them on it, so they felt more comfortable. This big goofy guy got the hang of things after about 20 minutes. Lastly, takedown was a breeze. It took me about five to seven minutes to completely disassemble the entire fence. I am so excited to take this fence to the next rodeo. It is gonna save me so much hassle, so much stress, and money on stall fees. Once again, a huge thank you to Riding Warehouse for setting me up with this great fence kit. For more product reviews, tutorial videos, or barrel racing drills, be sure to check out my website, reneecowley.com.